Hello, it's Emma Berry and I am back with another video and this time we are talking storyline. Um, this is going to be a really short kind of knowledge shot on how you can elevate your e-learning courses using reflective exercises. So I'm a huge fan of reflective exercises within e-learnings and I've spoken before quite a few times about how I follow a CAR format, so context, activity, reflection. And I like to include these either at the end of a section or at the end of like a topic or a big exercise, for example. And they just encourage the learner to pause, think about what they've learned and define any actions. So these are super simple to set up within Storyline. They're just text entry boxes, um, which the learner can then type in um, their answers. So for now, I've just copied in some lorem ipsum into this um, reflection here. If I select next, we've got reflection two. And imagine between these, there's content and the learner's done some activities, etc. Um, so then they're doing their reflections for section two and then their reflections for section three. So here we have our kind of finished page. Um, and this would go at the end of the e-learning and allows them to see all of the notes that they've made throughout this e-learning. And it's got a nice little scroll bar as well. Uh, so they can um, see everything without it overflowing on the page. So I've also added this save button because what I was finding is that these reflective exercises were great, but then at the end of the e-learning, um, there was nowhere for it to go really. It was kind of stuck within the e-learning. Now Storyline does have a print slide function but the problem with that is it acts a little bit like a screenshot. So it would take a picture of this slide. But obviously, if you're writing more than maybe a sentence, which you'd like to think the learners will, but um, anything under this scroll bar would get lost. So I needed something that meant that I could capture all of this content uh, without losing anything. So if we click save, we will see this in action. So you can see that it's downloaded a document called My Reflections. And if I select and open that, you can see it has got all of our reflections here on a Word document. So the learner could then edit this, they could add to it, they can save it to their desktop or wherever they need to save it. Um, they could even email it to a manager, for example, if it's part of like a one-to-one -one or compliance e-learning or something like that. So this allows them to, to physically take away their reflections and their actions. Uh, and is a great way to kind of continue the learning and bring it more into the workplace. So how do we set this up? Let's jump into Storyline and have a look at how we have made this possible. So here we are in Storyline and let's just quickly whiz through how we set up this kind of activity. So the first thing you need to do is implement your reflection activities themselves. So this is just a text entry box. And to add a text entry box, you just go to insert, input and then data entry and you just drag your text entry box like you would a normal text box and um, you can change the color of the font the size whatever make your slide look pretty and add your navigation buttons too so the key thing to, to kind of note here is to make sure that you are labeling your variables so if you're going to have more than one reflection activity in your e-learning um, you need to make sure that you are able to distinguish between each activity. So if you go onto the right hand side of your window and select the manage project variables button, and this will bring up all of your variables within your project. So obviously I've named mine, but when I first created this text entry box, this would have just been called text entry. And to rename it, all you have to do is select the variable and it highlights the text and you just type in whatever you want to call it. So label it something that's going to mean something to you. So because I've done mine as section one reflection, section two, and so on, I've just called it section one reflection. And this will make your life a lot easier when we come to putting in the um, JavaScript and collating all the notes. So I would do this as you go. So every time you create a new reflective exercise and add a new text entry box, make sure you're labeling that variable. So once you've set up your reflection exercises. Um, so imagine there's more slides in between these two and the learner's doing other things. At the very end of your e-learning, you then need to create your slide, uh, which will collate all your notes together. And again, this is super simple to set up. Uh, so first, all you need is a text box, and that's just one of the plain text boxes here. And draw it to be how big you want. And then I've typed in headings 
so that the learner can distinguish which notes go with which activity. So obviously mine are called section one reflections and so on. So I've typed these in and then underneath you can see this text that's highlighted in yellow and this is called a reference. So what this is doing is telling the system to refer back to the section one variable. And what it will do is pull everything that I wrote in section one into this text box here and the same for two and the same for three. And this is why, again, it's super important to label your variables because it will make it so much easier when you come to do this bit to because to insert a reference, all you do is go on to insert. So whilst clicking in your text box and go to reference, and then you just find the variable that you want to insert in. Um, so if like me, you're going to go down the route of adding a heading and then the text underneath, this means you can correspond the heading with whichever variable you're talking about. So the next thing you need to do is edit your text box to be able to accommodate the level of text. So in an ideal world, our learners would be writing more than a couple of sentences when it comes to the reflections or the actions or whatever. Um, and what that would do is then cause this text box to go off the screen. So we need to amend this. So right click on your text box and go to format shape and find the text box tab. And you can see that my settings are slightly different here than the default ones it gives you for a text box. So usually under here, it would say things like do not wrap text, um, auto, uh, auto fit, I think, I'm not sure. And then you'll have a big blue button down the bottom, which will say upgrade project text. And you need to select that. And what that will do is give you the option to add things like scroll bars into your text boxes. So select that um, and then close and then you'll have to reopen it. And what you will find is you will give, be given these settings here. So auto fit and overflow handling. So we want to set auto fit to fixed size because what that will mean is that this text box won't get bigger with the amount of text going in it. So if we had it on expand height or expand width, it would start to go sort of either way and could come off the slide space. So select fixed size. So that text box will always stay that size regardless of how much text goes in it. And with overflow handling, you want to select add scroll bars. And much like a web page, it will add a scroll bar to the text box. And if the text exceeds the space, so the text box space, it will add a scroll bar and the learner can scroll up and down and see their notes. So that's the second thing to do when setting this up. Now we're going to move on to the slightly more complex part, and that is including JavaScript. But don't panic. I will make it as simple as possible because um, I am a complete novice in JavaScript. I only use it for very basic functionality and um, coding just blows my brain. So if I can do it, you can do it. So the first thing you need to do is create your save button. And you can call this whatever you want, download, um, export, whatever. So just a plain button and then you need to set your trigger up. And this is an ex execute JavaScript trigger. So select your new trigger button. And then the action is execute JavaScript, which is sort of towards the bottom. And then when the user clicks, whatever your button's called. And you will notice that this will highlight in red. And if you select it, it opens up your JavaScript editor window. And this is where you're gonna paste your HTML code in. So before you panic and think, Emma, I don't know how to code, um, use the power of the internet because this is exactly what I did. Um, I've had this HTML code saved for this function for quite a while. Um, and all I did was Google it. I wanted to know the answer. So I saw if anybody else had already done it for me and they had. So let's jump into my browser. And if I go into our e-learning heroes, you will see this lovely person called Craig has posted some example code, which does exactly what we're sort of exploring here. So if I just go back to my search, you'll see what I actually searched to find this. So I typed in storyline JavaScript, export text entry to Word. And then it's the first uh, web page that comes up from the Articula community. So I just select that again. And lovely Craig here has provided this example code. So the first thing to do is just copy this. Copy this over and add it in to your JavaScript window 
And this will give you the basis, the foundations to play upon um, from which you can then start editing this code to meet your own needs. So where we've got, if I go from here, where we've got this bit here that says plus player dot get there and text entry, this is the variables that you're going to want it to pull across. So this example code in particular is set to pull information from a text entry box. Now we're doing it slightly different in that we're not pulling from a text entry, we're pulling from a text box. So it complicates things slightly, but not by much. So again, this is why you need to know the names of your variables, because all you're going to do is paste your variable name where it says text entry. So if I jump back into my uh, storyline and my JavaScript, you can see here where I've got my code. So we've got the heading, which is my reflections. So that's what's going to come up with the title of the document. Heading two, which is section one reflection. So that introduces my notes for section one. And then underneath, we've got the plus player get variable. And then I've put in section one reflection. And this is the name of my variable for those notes. And then you just repeat. So I've just essentially copied that again and added the variable for section two. And again, for section three, and obviously changed the heading names for section three, section two as well. And then you have your end HTML. So it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, but again, this is why I've kind of been hammering home that label your variables something that makes sense to you. Because if you even have so much as a tiny typo in here, uh, it's not going to recognize it and it's not going to pull that information across. So sometimes it's best to go and copy and paste it over so you know you're getting it exact. You can also then change the name of the document. So where it says file name equals, um, this might say something else and you can just delete it and change the name. So this, I think before my example code says something like um, my notes and I just changed it to my reflections. But you could, again, you could put anything you want here. And we've got here type and it's set to application MS Word because it's going to open Microsoft Word. Now, if you are working for a client or an organization where you know that actually they all use Macs and they don't really use MS Word, then you could change this um, to suit an application that is on a Mac as well. Now, again, before you kind of start to panic and think, Emma, I don't know how to do that at all. This is where we're going to use the power of AI and ChatGPT because I also didn't really know how to do this. And particularly with this section here and adding the variables, I was getting really stuck because what it was doing is exporting the notes, but without any spaces between them. It was just running the text into itself. And um, you were just getting a Word document that was just full of text. And it was no, there was no spacing, there was no paragraphs. Um, so I needed to implement that. But again, I had no idea. I tried Googling it and it was going way over my head. So I thought, I know, let's jump into chat GPT and ask it to do it for me. And that's exactly what I did. So if we go into um, my chat GPT here, you can see what I did. I did. OK, so you can see I've got my my JavaScript here. And originally, if you look here, my original code just had the the pull to the variables, so section one, section two, and section three. And that was what was causing the text to just run into each other. There was no spacing. So I asked uh, ChatGPT, amend this JavaScript code to add line breaks between sections. So it recognizes that these are called sections. Now you'd probably want to change this wording based on your what you've called your variable. So if um, these were called activity re reflection or something, you might want to change between activities. So it recognizes what you're talking about. Um, and then I just copied all the code in. And what it did was amend it for me. So it gave me information on how to do it. But again, that just went straight over my head, to be honest. Um, I'd already tried to Google that and it didn't understand it. So it gave me the amended code. And you can see here what it did was add in those headings and those power, that paragraph spacing for me. And then all I did was copy the amended code in, back into Storyline. So back into here, selected OK. And then you publish your course to review because annoyingly it won't let you preview JavaScript in Storyline preview mode. And tested it. And it worked 
perfectly. And that's where we got this finished formatting of this Word document here. Now, it really is very much a process of trial and error. So what I would say is start with that basic example code and then make very small tweaks one step at a time. So don't go crazy um, changing everything because that will make it hard to identify where there's any problems. So do one thing at a time. So maybe start with just changing what the font is going to be, change the name of the document, change the heading, and then start to look at these variables. Um, and again, if you've got multiple variables, add them one at a time, check it's working, add the next one, check it's working. So it's a bit tedious, but once you've got this code working, it then becomes a, an example code for you to keep. And that's exactly what I've done. So this is my best practice code, essentially. And I keep this now and just apply it to any e-learnings that I do. Um, so it's worth spending that little bit of time to get it right. So have a go, have a play with it. Um, I will link this file as a little freebie for everybody. So feel free to copy the structure, feel free to copy the code, uh, copy the variables, and let me know what you come up with. Um, I'd love to see how people utilize this functionality. And I will catch you in the next video.